please ask I want your that person removed. I want him removed. I'm well, sorry. Well, a sergeant of arms, take him out, please. Please take him out. I will not go. I must be carried out. Retracted. Sam, retracted. We've gotten to a point where both sides are firm, both sides are vituperative, and both sides are just out for the kill. I think we should do away with gays if possible. If I were a, a mother of a son, I would be very, I would be very, very unhappy. Why aren't prostitutes included in this, or pimps? That's a sexual orientation. As a matter of fact, they make a living by it. At least they gain something out of it. Leonardo da Vinci? He's gay. He was gay. Michelangelo, Plato, Socrates, Aristotle. Gay rights, gay rights, gay rights, gay rights, now. Gay rights, now. 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 Gay rights, gay rights, gay rights, It's high time for this council, once and for all, to say that there's a population of people in New York City, look, they're here, who want to be part of us all. This bill is nothing more but to promote a perverted lifestyle. A lifestyle that brings forth death. This is a total destruction of the moral values of this country. The basic principles that the country was founded on. This is an absolutely total destruction of them. The legislation simply says that there shall not be discrimination based on an individual's sexual orientation with respect to employment, with respect to housing, and with respect to places of public accommodation. today to hold a public hearing on the merits of a local law to amend the administrative code the city of New York in relation to unlawful discriminatory practices. The bill is intro number two. Let me just clarify one thing. It is not a duty of this body or any other legislative body to vote for any lifestyle. According to the official records of the clerk of the city council this is the 15th public airing of this topic making it the most debated legislation in the history of the council in this society gay people have never fared well 150 years ago the punishment in every state in the united states for homosexual activity was death was the death penalty most gay people aren't even aware of that otherwise there was no discussion of homosexuality in the law or in society generally Homosexuality was once known as the love that dare not speak its name. First of all, I knew since I was a kid that you don't tell anybody that you're gay. You just, I just instinctively knew that that was not going to go. I got married hoping that it would go away. It didn't go away. Police used to close gay bars regularly and it was an indignity. But in 1969, when the police raided the Stonewall Inn in Greenwich Village, gay people decided they weren't going to take it anymore. And they fought back and they fought back. It was a three-day riot that, that took place in the village. For most people, the Stonewall Rebellion marked the beginning of the modern gay movement. We, as a society, went through a sort of revolution in the early 70s. Suddenly, the issue of homosexuality could be discussed, and it could be admitted that there were such things in the United States and in New York City as gay men and lesbians. The original version of the bill was first introduced in 1971. This was the first bill of its kind ever introduced in a legislative body in the United States. In those days, they even had trouble getting liberal Manhattan council members to understand what they were talking about and to sponsor it. It was a bill that would have prohibited discrimination in housing, employment, in public accommodations. Anita Bryant started a backlash in 1977. That's when the opposition started to say, hey, this gay rights stuff is for real and we're against it and it's, uh, we're going to fight it. Uh, we realized that we had serious opposition, that we weren't going to be treated as a passing fad or as an amusement. And that if we were going to gain anything, that we'd have to really fight for it. And in the 70s and 80s, cities like Los Angeles, San Francisco, Washington, Philadelphia, Boston, Detroit, and the state of Wisconsin passed gay rights laws, but still not in New York City. And although New York is considered America's most diverse city, a city where there were laws to protect every other group against discrimination, there was no law to protect lesbians and gay men. 
this bill, in one form or, or another, has been kicking around the city council for 15 years. It was initially introduced in 1971, and every session of, this, of the council has rejected it every year. When I first went to a hearing that was in 1978, you're sitting there saying, well, we have to win. If anybody's listening to this, we have to win. And then when, at the end of it, you lose the vote, it's a tremendous shock. Some of the people laughing when it went down and was just outrageous. It was more than you could take. It was awful. I had friends who were who, both in 81 and 83 who were crying, who were upset. Especially the last time that we lost. There was real feeling of like, I am not going to leave this city council. You're going to have to drag me out of here. Even if we knew we were going to lose, we wanted to get those council members on the record. We wanted to keep the issue before the public. And so... We, members of the lesbian and gay community, and our supporters, are here once again for the tenth time in 15 years to give testimony to the fact that we are indeed victims of discrimination. My whole thing is that you do not give up no matter what. That you keep on fighting. I mean, it's that important. The gay rights movement um, that arose 15 years ago is simply a child to the other civil rights movements, to the civil rights movements of longer standing, to the black civil rights movement, to the women's civil rights movement. It simply couldn't have existed but for those movements. It is laughable to consider the gay community as a deprived community and needing special protection. And by the admission of the homosexual community itself, they are some of the most affluent and well-to-do members of our society. So the question of economic deprivation, a lack of access to jobs, a lack of access to housing, a lack of access to places of public accommodation, that is just a facade. The homosexual community has been crying a song about abuse and misuse. Can they even compare the gas chambers or ovens, uh -huh. the ovens of Auschwitz, with what they're going through, I dare think not. Can they compare the, the lynch mobs in Alabama and Mississippi and in New York City against black people? They cry about their employment problems. They live in the lap of opulence. Their income is more than any minority group, and they're crying the blues. You know, if you look at the media, um, you'll learn that a gay person is like Stephen Carrington on Dynasty, and he has a lot of money, and he's white, and he's over 21, and he has blonde hair, and he's healthy. Uh, in the black community, in all sorts of other communities within the gay community, we know that's not true. The gay community is composed of many different facets. Um, we're tall and we're short, and we're white and we're black, and we're male and we're female. And we're proud and we're ashamed and we're wealthy and we're poor and we're bright and we're stupid. And we're, we're what any other community can be. We're a mixed bag. I am 77 years of age and gay. Standing at my side, as he has done for over 55 years, is my life partner, Bruce Merrow, who is 75. Those, those 55 years have not been easy because the climate of homophobia generated by prejudice against gay people has forced us to walk a tightrope between conformity and invisibility just to survive. Passing the law merely gives you another tool with which to fight discrimination. In other words, it not only becomes a matter of one's conscience or a matter of one's moral concept or religious, it now becomes illegal. 
There were fine, eloquent statements made by many of our public officials about discrimination and how horrified they are by it. So am I and so are the Catholic war veterans, horrified by discrimination against anybody. But that's not the issue here. And there's no proof been offered yet. The bill reads, the council finds that there is discrimination. Finds on what? For years, we tried to find people who had been discriminated against and ask them to come to testify. And there was no secret that there were many, many of those people out there. They unfortunately couldn't come to testify because they've already lost a job or their housing. Uh, to be more public would have done it again. I mean, we even considered bringing people in with sheets over their heads or other types of things to do this some way anonymously. Where are the detailed and verifiable statistics on discrimination against the homosexual community. That kind of information does not exist. We started a two-year report compiling just the calls that we had that came in about sexual orientation discrimination. Let me read you this example. A Brooklyn lesbian finally found uh, an apartment that she felt was affordable for her and her family. Her family consisted of her lover and her son. And everything was rolling along smoothly with the rental until she brought her lover with her to look at the apartment. Uh, and she was suddenly told that the apartment was no longer available. In fact, the words that the owner used are, we don't rent to your kind, uh, we don't want lesies here. In 1930, I was given 48 hours to vacate my apartment because the landlord discovered I was gay and he would not rent to fags. If a gay or lesbian person would not go apply for a job or go for an apartment without indicating what their sexuality is, just like I wouldn't indicate what my sexuality is, no one will know. What the intro to does is introduce says you no longer should be keeping your private life private. What they want is to be able to flaunt to say, hi, I'm gay and I'm lesbian, hire me or rent me that apartment. And that's what I feel uh, this bill will do. After mixing with someone and one discovered later on that he was homosexual, that would not be as offensive having gotten a sense of who he was as a person and his professional ability as suddenly coming in and saying now as a protected class, you have to hire this or you, or you cannot discriminate it against that or now homosexuals are served up on a plate. Why should this legislation be needed? If homosexual acts are indeed a private affair between two consenting adults, why do they have to come out here and make a big show and pass intro too? Why do they want to make what they say is a private affair a public affair? They are hypocrites who do that. We have a case of a man who worked in a hardware store and his boss saw him exiting from a gay bar one time and he just said to him, uh, quote, I don't like to have faggots working, working for me, you're fired. It's true he was gay, but he certainly wasn't telling anybody about it. He was trying to hide it and keep it secretive. And here's your example of that somebody may accidentally be found out just through no means of their own and they still lose their job just as much as if they had been the most blatant gay rights activist. I know some people are going to find this impossible to believe, but I have no animus for a homosexual human being. However, I do not want that homosexual person shoving his lifestyle down my throat. Discrimination against gay people is of a different nature than being discriminated against because you're black or because you're a woman, because those are always outward visible things that people you know can see about you when you're when you're gay the main thing that you're experiencing is hiding who you are and having to hide who you are so that you don't get discriminated against it is energy draining to have to think about this is my home life and i do this and this and this and this and these and these people know this this is my work life and and you spend so much energy on that i think the people who are heterosexual should should just think about how they would feel if they had to constantly, at their place of work, uh, among their friends, had to lie about the relationships that we're in. Most people are very proud of the people that they love. They carry pictures around of the people that they love. 
and to suggest to people that you're going to have to lie about this and keep this quiet for the rest of your life, that's a monstrous suggestion. If a heterosexual is permitted to kiss his or her spouse or partner outside the workplace, then a gay person has that same right. That's what the bill says. You can't say a heterosexual can kiss uh, a life partner, but uh, a homosexual can't. And that's the way it should be. That's not flamboyance. That's not flaunting. I have to remind the Jewish people that there was a time, don't let the guy with the yarmulke come in here. Let him take off his yarmulke so nobody will know he was a Jew. It was okay, you know? We're doing the same thing here. People are saying, the religious, some of them are saying, who are serious and sincere about this, they're saying, I will defend your right to a job and to a home. Just don't tell anybody that you are a homosexual or that you are a lesbian. Is there any time in history of civil rights legislation that we have legislated laws dealing with a lifestyle? Yes. And I would submit, for Could example, uh, Councilman Deere, that if there was discrimination against people who wore yarmulkes, that is an issue of lifestyle. And the U.S. Supreme Court has been dealing with that issue. And that's an aspect. You're some attorney. Not being an attorney, I can tell you that falls under religion. I'm talking about is there a time that you have legislated for lifestyle? If you're an attorney, you should know that. I want to respond to your question. Yes. When Title VII of the Civil Rights Act was passed, religion was interpreted to mean just belief. And then the Civil Rights Act was amended to add religious practice to protect people who followed a certain lifestyle because of their religious belief. This bill uh, simply takes the, uh, the fundamental American principle of tolerance and in incorporates into it this new idea that people have the right to their own sexual identity as well. And it also recognizes that that identity may be as important to some people as religion is to others. I am a white woman, 47 years of age, an American of Italian descent, a native New Yorker born in Brooklyn and raised in Queens educated in the Catholic, Catholic school system. I am presently a college professor, a teacher for the past 25 years of my life. So far, my description of myself is probably very similar to millions of other middle-class, tax-paying, voting, law-abiding citizens who fit very neatly into the mainstream of our society. But I am also and very definitely a lesbian and have been all of my life and having stated that I realize that everything I said a few moments ago will be completely disregarded and I will be judged solely on the basis of my sexual orientation can you imagine being fired from three teaching positions because it was rumored that you were gay Yet all evaluations on your teaching ability read superior teacher, I can imagine it happened to me. Can you imagine finding garbage dumped in front of your doorstep with little notes attached to it? Some obscene, others telling you to get out of the neighborhood. I can imagine it happened to me. Can you imagine being attacked and brutally beaten by three male owners of a hotel who thought you might be gay. Oh, I can imagine. It happened to me. This is an issue that affects all the people because once there is discrimination against anyone, it is against everyone. Uh, just stepping off the train with a friend of mine, we're on our way to work. Both obviously sort of stylish, young, apparently gay men around town, which we were gay men. And uh, uh, there were some uh, people who threw a bottle at us and started screaming faggots. And it zipped right past my face and exploded on the wall about a foot to the left of me and the glass flew all over us. But it didn't, you know, we shielded ourselves. I mean, I had a friend uh, who, who just couldn't pass. And, and I remember she got, she got whipped by uh, those uh, car antennas. Guy whipped her with it. Yeah, you want to act, you know, you, you want to be a man, huh? I'll show you. You know, that kind of crap. I mean, I've had that kind of shit all my life. Violence is being perpetrated against gay people, not because they're necessarily out of the closet. I mean, people just go drive, fag bashers drive into the village and pick off any man that they think is gay. I've been fag bashed years ago, you know, and I mean, it happened when things were, were slow, you know, when there wasn't a lot of controversy going on. And I'm just somebody who, even when I'm dressed down, dressed very average, I mean, I seem to attract tension. I, I just read gay or something, you know. I've always had it. And, uh... Now I am nasty. 
Nasty isn't even the word. <laughs> it's terrible. And it's a terrible way to have to be. But, you know, I don't... Nobody's hitting me again. Violence. What kind of nonsense is violence? There are police laws right now. There are protection for these people. When the human rights bill is going to make it any different? There are no laws existing on the books of the statutes, the city, state, or federal laws that, uh, that's, that, <clears throat> that you can use to protect the rights of persons who are sexually and otherwise assaulted? We can do that, and we do do it after the attack. But what we want to do is to prevent those kind of attacks. But, 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 but sir, but sir, you currently have the ability to prosecute violations and offenses of that kind. Am I right, sir? As long as I'm from a civil rights standpoint, we treat gay and lesbian people as second-class citizens, we're going to encourage those kind of attacks. If you were beaten up and went to the police, it's possible that your employer would hear about the uh, complaint that you were making and realize that you were at least perceived to be a lesbian or a gay man, might fire you from the job. So that makes people who attack gay and lesbian people feel more confident that the victims may not complain to the authorities so that we can prosecute the cases. Thank you very much. Just as we have to heal racial tensions, we have to heal tensions over this. And it's in everybody's best interests. In most cities, Opposition to lesbian and gay rights is associated with Protestant fundamentalism. But in New York, we have very large Catholic and Orthodox Jewish communities, the leadership of which is very conservative and very anti-gay. A moral wrong cannot be a civil right. A moral wrong cannot be a civil right. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is for thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. A moral wrong cannot be a civil right. A moral wrong. New York is thought of as, as this liberal bastion, but it has some very conservative establishment religions. So that's that's the opposition that we were facing here. I brought along a Bible. You're gonna. I quiet. You're going to hear a lot from the Bible today. Consider this chestnut from Leviticus. If a man lie with a man as with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination, they shall be put to death. Nice, nice, nice. God is not dead and sodomy is not gay. Sodomy is a sin. If sodomy were not a sin, then there is no such word as sin. We may as well include, in a matter of preference, we may well include adultery as preference, bestiality as a preference, incest as a preference. Let us go, let's throw in a whole lot. Why stop at homosexuality? Let's get a sordid picture of this whole intolerable sexual perversion. I'm here to voice my disapproval of this bill. It promotes the legitimation of homosexual lifestyle and activity, which I deplore. Well said. Persons of the same sex not only should not make love because it is immoral, they cannot make love because it is impossible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Homosexuality is immoral in most religions, uh, uh, and, and uh, those people are looking at it from that perspective. And I think they shouldn't be looking at that. I respect their religious views. I'm a Catholic. Uh, uh, I, I believe in, in the Catholic Church's teachings, uh, but I don't see this in the same light. I'm a legislator, so I have to make sure that everyone is protected under the law. That's my job. It is immoral and should be illegal to discriminate against any person because of his or her sexual preference. We are scandalized by the present stand of opposition on the part of John Cardinal O'Connor and Bishop Francis McGavro.
the bishop's position seems to show an obsession with homogenital activity. Their opposition to this piece of legislation erodes the credibility of institutionalized Catholicism. Catholicism which should be marked by compassion, the compassion of Jesus. We wholeheartedly support Intro 2. There are prominent spokespersons in the Jewish and Catholic faiths who have spoken out against the bill, but there's really not one religious position. Who is pushing the pro-sodomy bill? It's Mr. Koch. Our city deserves more, better, than a morally perverted and crooked mayor who should be protecting citizens. Just a minute, Mr. Rabbi, you're, Rabbi not, you're not discriminating you're coming against here my to, freedom I'm going to let you speak, you? you're not but you're going to address the bill. I think what you do is talk you about the bill. homosexuality is not sodomy? And I think that that's not right. I don't like right. the way you started off. You don't like the way I started off? You're not my mother and you're not my father. I have three minutes, and so let me have my three minutes. Yes. Koch should resign. He's got political and moral aids, and he's trying to infect you all. Right. New York is not just a Greenwich Village bathhouse, Mr. Horowitz. It's families, it's children, it's religious values. Of course we're in the, in the middle of a crisis. And I don't think that we should abdicate. I think that people like Cardinal O'Connor are returning the concept of religious leadership to the fore. People are starved for that. I am a reformed Jew and I speak in support of intro two. There are some who fear the erosion of American morality. That is a legitimate concern. But if America is sick, the restoration of our moral health will not be achieved by denying gays or lesbians their elemental civil rights. That only compounds the illness. There are some opponents to this legislation who enjoy citing the Hebrew Bible's negative attitude towards homosexuality as their justification for the continued denial of civil rights for gays and lesbians. Now, proof texting from scripture is always a dangerous enterprise. Let me remind those who would seek the disrespect for a rabbi from you is really... You have no right to disrupt the meeting. Will you please ask that gentleman to Miriam, leave the one Miriam, who just I can handle it. I am not... Just can a minute. Yes. Yes. I'm people? chairing the okay, meeting. Okay, good. Can, please continue. Please, please continue. If neither medical nor social scientists know the source of the, or the cause of homosexuality, then certainly neither moralists clergy or others can be certain that they know whether or not homosexuality is a sin or just one of God's different creations. Let us then accordingly temper our judgments in the way that we would treat one another. You've never been, you've never been uh, harassed on the street? No one's ever said anything to you? What are you saying? No, Everybody people know that questions Jews about Jews Judaism. Judaism. I mean, I've seen this is going I've seen on harassed. I've seen it happen on the streets of hundreds of times. Nothing new. But, I mean, but what happens if it goes a step far and they say, you can't live in Brooklyn anymore? They don't want to rent to you because you are making the neighborhood. We're living in our own community. What do you rent to us? What's that got to do with We're living in our own community. But how do you in your own community? Because people buy a building and we, like everybody else. What the law? Brooklyn passes a law just like that without this law to stop, Brooklyn decides that people dressed like you are immoral and, and offensive and you've got to leave Brooklyn. When we Jews remember the Holocaust, as we must, Remember, too, that together with our brothers and sisters wearing the yellow star were the homosexuals forced to wear the pink triangle, and together they were gassed and cremated alive, innocent victims of Nazi barbarism. In my dual heritage, as an American and a Jew, I have been taught that reverence for the dignity of every human being must never be denied. This bill should have passed long ago. Failure to enact it now can only lead to one conclusion, hopefully false, that the might of bigotry, not the right of justice, has prevailed in this committee's decision. Rabbi, we have a question from Councilmember Deer. Do you think that the Bible, since you're an expert of religion, draws any distinction between homosexuality and heterosexuality? And if yes, what is the difference? The Bible draws a distinction, but Judaism is not based on the Bible alone. The whole Torah. New to me. The whole Torah includes, as you should know, sir. Quiet, Mr. The Chairman. Oral and the I'm sorry, too. Rabbi. Please, um, uh, wait, Mr. Miriam, Chairman. Just a minute, Miriam. Oh, yeah. I'm asking to be I'm recognized. I'm sorry. Now look, let's get it quiet. He's... 
Whether you agree... I am asking... Whether you agree with... That those who are insulting and making nasty remarks be removed. I want a ruling right now. Why could someone else... No, you're out of order. I'm you're sorry. not going to get recognized. I you. You're I not. I challenge the chair. I challenge the chair. Remove. Mr. Chairman... You're, you're out of order. I'm sorry. I'm you're out of order. You're, off, he's Mr. answering Chairman. your question. Yeah. You're out of order. I'm sorry. Mr. Chairman, order. I wonder why Miriam wants to evict all the opponents what? and she has never I beg your pardon. the bill and now for the bill. They just make the same noise. Thank you very much. Next speaker is Bishop Moore. I stand here as a bishop of the church. Many of my people are gay. I ask you that they be given protection of this law. The Episcopal Church at its convention in this diocese declared itself solidly behind homosexual civil rights as early as 1974. Our national church did the same thing at its 65th general convention. Like color, gender, and ethnic origin, sexual orientation is a condition which is a given. Although its etiology is still obscure, authorities agree that sexual orientation is acquired in early childhood and is not a matter of choice. No religious leader should have any problems with this bill because it specifically exempts religious organizations from employing people whose behavior is contrary to the views of that religion. It merely has to do with civil rights regardless of sexual orientation. They were two men, they happened to be black men, dressed up as women. The two men that came as women are men who have sex with other men. They are homosexuals. They are transvestite homosexuals. They would be protected under this bill as dressed. And I made the comment that these are future school teachers for your children. This bill is much more than law. It's much more than a bill. It triggers so many deep feelings in people, even though it has no legal uh, connection with the issue of teachers, really. Uh, it would raise the issue of teachers because people get very upset about the connection that they see between homosexuality and childhood. And I have seven children, and I, I lived in, a, in the Bronx, and I'm a lifelong resident of the city of New York. If anyone's being discriminated against, it's the parents that are being discriminated against. I want to be totally clear on that particular point. And you're trying to raise your children in a society that's has drugs, has crime, and so many other things. So here's another thing that society is going to give me that I have a problem that I have to safeguard my children from? They say they have to think of the children as if none of you are children, or ever were children, as if none of you have children, as if you have no family. You know, when I hear people say that we're not family or that we're a threat to the family, I, I think, in terms of myself, I think of my kids, I think of my grandchildren, and, uh, you know, my, my son-in-law. And I say to myself, what is that, I, if that's not family? I, as a parent, will have to be able to accept that they want to teach homosexuality to my children as an alternate lifestyle. That is totally unacceptable to me, and I'm willing to go to jail so that my children will not have those values immoral values forced upon him. The bill, they say, is not an endorsement of homosexuality. But then, as the New York Times pointed out in a recent pro-abortion editorial, the Supreme Court's Roe v. Wade decision didn't endorse abortion either. But 18 million deaths later, the killing of the unborn in this country has been, become not only socially acceptable, but morally right. My sense of it was that the biggest opposition to the bill came from the sense that this would endorse and promote homosexuality, that it would uh, convince some people who were in doubt that they should become homosexuals. First of all, that's, uh, that's a misguided and misinformed view of human nature and suggests that the people who think that don't 
aren't familiar with the medical literature or with the nature of human sexuality. Um, but most importantly, it indicates they don't understand the law. They don't understand the purpose of civil rights statutes. Civil rights statutes are not meant to promote or endorse anybody's lifestyle. They are intended to protect people so that they can make their own choices. Gay is not the way. Stop the bill. Gay is not the way. Stop the bill. Stop the bill. Stop the bill. Stop the bill. I think that the idea that their children will be wooed, converted, um, or swept up by a tide of homosexuality is a phantom. I was proselytized my entire childhood that heterosexuality it wasn't that they were anti-gay, it's just that all that was presented was heterosexuality. It did not make me straight. I, I was gay. If the kid becomes an homosexual or recognize himself or herself as an homosexual in an heterosexual environment where the pressure are so great to comply and to be heterosexual like everybody else. Well, one must recognize that there is something there which belongs to nature and not to a choice. Whose kid is going to choose to be different from everybody else? If homosexual people, men and women, have their civil rights, it's not going to persuade people to suddenly become gay. You don't go to bed with someone because of a civil rights law. However many people have the inclination to love people of their own sex will do that and always have done that in, in th throughout history. To place homosexual lifestyle on the same plane as heterosexual lifestyle is subversive of the society that we belong to whose basic unit is the family. Bravo! You hear people here telling you that they are pro-family. I want to give you a little example. A uh, boy wrote to me for help. He was 18, an art student at NYU, grandson of a Rebbe. He came home to his family to tell them that he had homosexual feelings. Feelings! Because he had always been very close with his family. When he went back to school, he found himself locked out of his dormitory, taken out of classes. When he, he tried to reach home by phone, he could not. He went home, found his belongings burning on the lawn, locked out of the house. He looked into the window where they were sitting, shiver, this is love and pro-family. Let's talk about some of you guys in orientation towards incest, uh, towards rape, uh, towards any number of, uh, of uh, sexual transgressions. We don't want to give them official license. We don't want to stamp them kosher. I would like to hope and believe that they're not going to pass this. It's the most destructive piece of legislation that they could ever be enacted anywhere, anywhere in the States. Give our children a chance to grow up and make their own decisions. Contrary to the propaganda of the so-called pro-family forces, danger to children and the family does not come from homosexuality. Danger to children and family comes from campaigns that foster violence, especially violence against adolescents. And finally, danger to children and family comes from the creation of such fear and loathing against the homosexual that parents turn against their own children and adolescents commit suicide rather than be discovered. We have lots of cases of young people who are hurt badly by their families. One of our cases concerns a young lesbian who was attacked by both her father, her mother, and a sister on numerous occasions. She was kicked and slapped by her father, assaulted with a wire hanger by her mother, and attacked with a knife by her sister. Uh, and they kept shouting anti-lesbian remarks against her. And of course, if the person can't afford to, uh, they have to stay in the house and take this kind of uh, uh, brutality or perhaps just go out on the streets. We call them throwaways sometimes. Again, it is discrimination and hatred that endanger and corrupt children, not homosexuality or the homosexual. And it corrupts a heterosexually oriented child to be taught that it is right to discriminate against the homosexual, just as it corrupts a child to be taught to hate Jews, blacks, Hispanics, Catholics, or any other group. Bigotry is ugly. It is especially ugly when it poses as virtue. Hatred is easy to incite. But once unleashed, it is not easy to contain. Once it succeeds against one group, it threatens all those groups who are seen as too pushy, as getting special treatment, or who don't know their place. This bill is necessary to protect children and families. It is necessary not only to protect homosexual children and their families, but to protect the 90% of children who are heterosexual as well. They need to have their right protected, not to be corrupted, not to be taught to hate, not to despise, and not to persecute those who are different. Thank you.
You want to see the end result of this lifestyle? Then come with me into the hospitals and see these young men dying of AIDS. Right on. Come and see their bodies rotting off the very bone. Come and see their body covered with these ugly purple welts as they lose pound after pound, as they lose 60, 70, 80 pounds, then come and tell me that this is right. This is an issue of degeneracy. This is an issue that is a health crisis. This is an issue that can spread AIDS. If you say the word gay to people and you do ask them to do a word association, the first word that they're gonna say is AIDS. And it's a terrible burden to be associated with a deadly, uh, non-curable illness. That's exactly why we need a gay right. Sure, a AIDS, like AIDS rights is what you're talking about. Take your AIDS out of here. Do you have AIDS? We don't have AIDS. We don't want you probably have AIDS. Maybe I do have AIDS. Okay, no, no, I don't want to be next to you. That's my human right. You are a health hazard in this city. You're a health hazard in New York City. AIDS has nothing to do with You know, it was bad enough to have discrimination and prevent you from being a average person and citizen. You know, worried about your job, worried about your home. Now you're being accused of carrying an abomination in terms of a health hazard. People who are sick, if you have a cold, you go to a doctor. If you have AIDS, you're quarantined. You don't put somebody who can kill people out to mingle with other people. Those who are calling against the bill, many of them are calling for actual extermination, actual violence, actual elimination, and feel righteous about it. Many of my people in this diocese have died of AIDS. As chairman of the Governor's Advisory Council to the AIDS Institute, I am familiar with the radical increase of discrimination against homosexual men in this city since the advent of the AIDS epidemic. People have been kicked out of their apartments because the landlord feels like they're a person who might give AIDS to someone. I have heard tragic story after tragic story of harassment, persecution, rejection, and denial of basic rights against young men who were dying. There was a case in a hospital where the uh, custodial staff uh, tried to set aflame one of the uh, persons with AIDS. The lover of a gay man with AIDS called to say that their landlord, once he found out one of them had AIDS, sent, quote, goons uh, to beat on their door in the middle of the night, left messages on their answering machine such as death to faggots, and finally accosted the lover with AIDS on his way back from a chemotherapy appointment with a lead pipe and with a chair. For many people that I know, AIDS made gay rights issues serious. It's also created a certain reservoir of sympathy for gay people. Uh, that hadn't existed before. That people could really see that we're a p group of people that has been victimized in one way or another. About uh, three or four months ago, we dedicated a book at a very moving service where over a thousand people came. The Ahale! book were the names of people who had died from AIDS uh, since the epidemic began and their names were read solemnly one by one into the great dark cathedral that night and it was one of the most moving moments of my whole life. Eddie Jones, Norman Joseph, Joseph Hines, Ed Holliker, Richard Horn, James House. My feeling today uh, is that uh, half the people I know are going to be dead in five years. And that's such an overwhelming thought, I don't even know what to do with it. I see activists, people who founded groups uh, uh, going by the wayside, putting them in the ground. Um, this movement is being absolutely devastated. I hope 
that there are a lot more people coming along to replace those people. I've lived in New York City for 13 years, always as an openly gay man, and for the last two, as a person with AIDS. I've always been proud to be a resident and a voter in this city, but there have been times when I have been ashamed that my beloved city has not offered protection to gay men and lesbians, when gay friends were harassed at work, when others were denied apartments, and most ashamedly, when other people with AIDS were treated shabbily at hospitals or by landlords. That's when I felt that New York City was letting me down. It's very important for me to be here to testify in behalf of gay rights, not only as a gay person, but also as a person with AIDS. I'm fighting for all the people who can't get out of bed and all the people who have already died from AIDS. I am not asking for special consideration. I am asking you to vote in favor of Intro 2 so that all citizens of this great city can enjoy the same liberties. Thank you. Miles Macbeth, Victor Manton, Val Martin, Robert Roy Meyer, Bert McBride, Robert McCarthy, James McCallum. I've seen my friends die of it, and uh, I'm doing what I can to uh, warn people about it and help them, and, and also to help people still have a positive gay identity throughout this crisis. No matter how devastating this thing is, we will always exist, and this is not going to stop us. I've testified before this council on this issue for 15 years. I implore you, at this moment of such tragedy for the gay community in our city, to pass this law of civil rights for homosexual persons. Most of the gay people I know including me, want to live in a society that respects them and that treats them fairly. More than anti-discrimination attached to this bill is that, is that position of advocacy and education and promotion, and the gays are going to run with this. Very, very hard and very fast. A lot of people do not like homosexually oriented people. Some gay people don't like straight people. The bill doesn't say that we have to like each other. It says that we have to learn to live with each other in peace. It's not only common sense, it's good social policy. That's another thing. What do you people want? What do I want? I want what you want. I want a right to a job. I want a right to not have to fight to keep my kids. I want a home. I want, you know, I want all the good things in life. With all the issues we have in this city, transportation and crime and drugs, gay rights. Yeah. This is in Greenwich Village of Manhattan. I'm talking about working, hard-working, family-oriented people. 90% against it. Right. Right. I believe in miracles like everybody else does. And there's a God watching over us. That tomorrow, we are going to be the winners. And we'll finally defeat once and for all the Gay Rights Bill. Some of the people in this room may think of me as a faggot, but no matter what you think of me or what you do in relationship to this bill, you will never make me ashamed of who I am or how I love. And it is both humiliating and degrading that we should have to stand here once again and try to convince anyone that we have suffered enough to deserve to be treated like human beings. It is not gay people who are on trial here. It is the council's commitment to social justice. I ask you to pass intro to as a matter of common decency. Thank you. The battle tomorrow is only phase one. Just phase one. We may win, we may lose. 
But in the end, all right thinking people on an issue like this will win. I think everybody is extremely apprehensive and uh, excited at the same time because it looks like the bill is going to pass. However, there's been a lot of you know maneuvering going on here today and so it's made people quite anxious. I'm born to Puerto Rican parents in the South Bronx and in the mid 50s I can remember handwritten signs placed on billboards saying that spics were not welcome in the area. I am no hypocrite. I proudly vote I on Metro. Please announce the vote. By a vote of five in the affirmative, one in the negative, no abstentions, intro number two is adopted. I sat in, um, in the chamber, um, in a balcony above the chamber, uh, when it passed. And I realized when Ruth Messenger was speaking that it was going to pass, and I started to cry. I was just really happy that it wouldn't have to be coming back to the chamber this following year. Because it, was, it had taken so long and it had been so painful, so painful to go through that process and to feel um, so continually hated. It was like about time. We deserve this. Oh, it's, uh, it's not great to feel today that we uh, lost today, but it's only the beginning. You know, I'm proud. I'm going to be able to sleep tonight in good conscience that I did, that I, I thought was right. It's not the kind of thing where, where you've won a football game, where you want to go off and say, yeah, we're number one, we're number one. That's not what it's about. It's about we've all won something. Everybody in the city has won something. We've all won some justice here. For those of us who voted against the bill as I did, I'm hoping that we will be able to continue to work with the gay community and with other communities and going forward with other work in the city that must be done. And now we can start healing up the wounds around this issue because it was an ugly fight and uh, it was not, that was not a lot of fun. You know, the sky is not gonna fall. There isn't going to be any dramatic change in the, the course of the life of this city. All this bill does is to say that as it relates to jobs, as it relates uh, to uh, renting uh, an apartment, that you may not take into consideration whether an individual is a uh, heterosexual or a homosexual. You can only take into consideration, can they do the job? Can they pay the rent? I think most people believe that's fair. We're just starting on the road towards, you know, uh, acceptance of gay people and acceptance of difference in society, because that's what it's really about.